Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. In this video, I would like to share with you some very practical tips and tricks that will make your life as a developer easier. To start with, I have created this very basic concept like we have this submit payment handler and we have the submit payment I request. Obviously, we are using here Mediator and what I want to set up is a very basic scenario for which or on which we would need to use database transactions. So if we take a look what happens in this handler, we see that, okay, we just create a new transaction and then we actually have to perform different steps and we need to make sure that all these state changes will be persisted in the database correctly. Because if one is persisted and the other one not, then we will have some problems because our applications would be in an inconsistent state. So the first thing that we do is when we receive a payment we obviously create it in the database and we use this save changes async and the reason why we need to do this here is that we need to save it in the database because then we get an identifier an id for the payment and we need that identifier to also create a payment authorization because we can assume in this case the business logic the requirement is each time that you submit a payment also a payment authorization needs to be created and obviously those two need to be linked so that's why we create here the payment authorization and we use the identifier because after the save changes async we will have an identifier in that one and then we'll also add the payment authorization to the database and last but not least we just commit the transaction and return the result and obviously if we have an error we can just roll back the transaction this code is conceptually okay and you would probably write something like this very often in your application however from my point of view i think it's easier to keep things as simple as possible in the handler. And there is this concept of the transaction that clutters basically what happens in our handler. So one very useful way to use mediator behavior pipelines is to create pipeline behaviors for database transactions. And I have this basically in all my projects, like a behavior that wraps all the handlers and we wrap everything into a transaction that we obviously commit if everything is okay but roll back if we throw an exception or if an exception gets thrown. So let's take a look at how we can implement this. And I have already created here this class this, which is called DB transaction behavior and then it's a T request of T response and inherits I pipeline behavior because that's how we implement a behavior. Now what we could do here, obviously, first of all, we would need a field for the AppDB context and a constructor that would hold or that will get a DB context injected. Then as part of the interface, we need to implement this handle method. Here is where we'll move all the database transaction logic. First of all, this means that we need to create a new transaction for each request handler that is wrapped with this pipeline behavior. Then we can implement our try catch construct. Since we don't want to perform any type of logic before the handler gets executed, we will just have here this var result and the wait next. So we will just pass on the action to the next pipeline behavior or to the handler if there is no other pipeline behaviors in the pipeline. And then if everything is okay, we just commit the transaction and return the result. If the await next will throw an exception, we catch it here. And in that case, we can simply just roll back the transaction. Now, if we go back to our handler, we can start to clean it up. And for now, I will delete everything that I have here in the handler and I replace it with a cleaned version. So in the cleaned version, we don't need any try catch. We don't need any transaction. So we just perform our business logic, meaning that first we need to create or add the payment to the database and save the changes. Then we create the payment authorization. Then we also add and persist the payment authorization. And then we return the newly created payment. Payment. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel if you're for the first time here. And if you have any question or just want to get in touch with me, don't be shy and head over to that comment section and leave a comment. I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.